All right, let's talk about studio products, organization, stuff I like. I don't know. All right, so it's been a while since I've talked about any kind of product in my studio, whether that's like organizational and vibe type of things or product like pieces of gear that I actually like and use a lot. So I figured, since it's literally been years, that we could talk about some of these things today. And, you know, I'll put links in the description to, I think, most of these products. I think most of these products I'll have links in the description for. So if you feel like it, go check those out. Some of those links will help support my channel. So if you do, thank you. Other than that, I am definitely not a vlogger. So whenever possible, I think I'm just going to hold up the product here. And then if I can't hold it up, I will use my camera, I guess. I don't think I have anything else to say, so I guess I'll just get started with the list now. All right, so for years I had this type of stand, the on-stage stands. Um, this one's disassembled, so you can see how much I like it. I don't like them. I don't like them at all. They kind of fall apart easily. The threading isn't great on them. They're, they're not good. And so recently what I did is I was able to upgrade my mic stand. So I have a couple new mic stands. They're by K&M stands. I really like them so far. I'm really happy with them. I actually have one of them right behind me here. So, so you can't see the whole thing here, but hopefully you get the idea. Maybe I'll put some B-roll in here so you can see the whole stand. But basically they're made by K&M. They're much more sturdy. They've been holding up much better. They're much easier to use. And I've really been, I've really been enjoying them. So K&M stands, I'm happy with them. Another upgrade that I made a while back, I don't know how long it's been. It's been a little while, but basically I got the acoustic treatment that's right behind me here. So these are standing bass traps. They're by Gik Acoustics, so G-I-K. I hope I said that right. I'm not sure if I said that right though. So don't hold me to it, please. But basically what I've been doing here in my mixing area some of you guys might know this if you've been watching my channel, but I have a loft area here and it's, it's a pretty small loft area. So right behind these panels, there's actually a drop and just open space. So there's my kitchen and my living room immediately behind me. So it's a huge space to treat since I have like two stories worth of wall directly behind me. And it can be kind of like... There's a lot of natural reverb in there, and so I kind of figured I would target this location here and try to work on this space first, and it's made a big difference to do that. So I got the attack wall here in front of me and the Gek Acoustic standing bass traps behind me, and they've been making a big difference, so I'm happy with them. Oh, so another thing that I got, two things that I got kind of recently are microphones. So I've been really pumped about these two microphones. So I got the Aston Spirit microphone, and I got a vintage ribbon mic from Sylvia Massey. So I actually have the ribbon mic right here. I need to get a case for it. Let me take it out of its bag. I'm gonna be gentle with it. But this is what I got. I hope you guys can see it. It's really fun. Uh, this is actually my first ribbon microphone. I've used plenty in studio while working before. Put this away before I start making a lot of noise here. So yeah, I've used a lot of ribbon microphones in commercial studios through my work, but this is my first one to actually have in my home studio. So I'm really pumped about it. It's super, super warm sounding. It's, it's cool. It's like the type of microphone I could use for like an effect on something. It's very... I don't know how to say it. It's very, it's very warm. It's very different from most microphones that we get or we find. So I'm really pumped about it. I'm pumped to use it for some fun things. Some, maybe some experimental stuff. I don't know. It's going to be great. It's awesome. I like it. I've been experimenting with it a little bit so far. And then I also got the Aston Spirit microphone a while back, which is kind of on the opposite end of things in my mind, right? It's a new microphone. I bought it brand new. It's very crisp and clean sounding. It's kind of tonally on the opposite side of the spectrum. So I got to try out a friend's version of that microphone. I didn't think I was going to buy a microphone at the time, but then I liked it a lot, so I ended up buying it. So that's the other microphone that I've gotten recently. 
and I've been really happy with it. I did a whole video about it actually. So I'm just gonna put a card on the screen somewhere for you guys to see that if you wanna check out that microphone. So another thing that I got recently, I seem to have to restock periodically and it's just an organizational item for your studio, but it can help so much. I like feeling like I have a fairly clean space, even though I seem to make it messy over and over. But the thing is a pack of cable organizers. So I get this kind. I don't know if you guys can see it very well. I'll take one out so you can see it. And I'll put a link in the description for these. I actually can't see the brand name here on the bag. I'm not confident. It might be D-Wings, but that might not be the entire brand name. I don't know, I'm bad at this stuff. Anyway, so they look like this. Ooh, I got hair on me. So they look like this. I still have hair on it. But basically they look like this. And so here's where the sticker is. You peel that off and stick it somewhere. And then you put the cable through here. This part opens up. And that's it. And I've also gotten this kind before. Which I will also see if I can figure out which ones these are through my history and put a link there for you guys. Yeah, that's what I'll do. So cable organizers. All right, so another thing that I got that I'm really excited about that I've really been enjoying are the Kali Audio in 8 studio monitors. And I was kind of struggling with my high end with my previous studio monitors. And these have made it so much easier to hear everything. And they have some cool features. Like when you're setting up, you look at where you're located in the room and they have some switches on the back of the monitors that you adjust depending on where you're actually placing the monitors in the room. So I thought that was cool and they sound great and I've been really happy with them. Another thing that I've been getting from my studio recently is kind of more of a me thing, but some of you guys might know from watching my channel, I did an electronics technician program. It was like a year, a little over a year and a half program recently. So I got a, a certificate as an electronics technician and I've been, I did some work in a repair shop before COVID hit and I just want to be able to fix and then also modify and mess with sound gear. So I got these cheap microphones to hopefully make them sound fun or interesting or different by messing with them, like actually opening them up and changing the circuits, stuff like that. So that is something that I've started to do. And I'll probably just put some B-roll on the screen. I probably already have for you guys to see what I'm talking about. Another thing, does anyone wanna see a video where I compare these cheaper, more consumer oriented mics to the more like industry standard, more like recording studio quality microphones? I don't know if, People would be interested in that, but let me know in the comments below if you wanna see that, cause I could totally do that. Yeah. Okay, so this might be one of the most utilitarian things that I got in my studio recently, but I did get a eighth inch extender cable for this one pair of headphones in my studio because I have these headphones. Let me show you. Now that I have my extender cable, I can actually show you these without unplugging them. But basically I got these, they're like really, old Walkman headphones. I don't know if you guys can see, but they're like the really old Walkman headphones. I guess they came with the Walkman. A friend of mine who's actually a monk now found this really old Walkman that's, it's like all metal in perfect condition. I think I showed it in a video somewhere before, but basically these are really great for monitoring to hear like harshness in my mixes. So I will listen to these towards the end of a mix process especially. And what I was doing before is I was kind of like going back and forth because I have my interfaces over here like a few feet to my right, but, but the headphones wouldn't reach my desk here. So I would have to kind of go back and forth and it was really awkward. I don't know why I did it that way for so long, but I eventually just got an extender cable for these because I have started to use these to actually monitor my mixes and it's not just a decoration piece anymore. So that's what, that's what I got. So I'll put that in the description too, I guess. I like the cable I got, so there's that. Oh, and I can show you the Walkman. Is it Walkman, 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 Walkman? Anyway, this is it. It's pretty cool. It's in perfect condition and it has like all the original manuals and uh, accessories that came with it. 
and it's really exciting. I keep meaning to put it in like a shadow box or something and hang it on my wall, but I haven't done that yet. So that's me procrastinating stuff, but I do that. Everyone does that, right? I hope everyone does that. I'm not that together. <sighs> okay. I hope this doesn't break my computer to set these here. <sighs> I'm like out of breath from running up and down the stairs. All right, so the next thing on my list is more of a vibe thing, and I seem to put something like this in my list every time I do anything similar to this. But basically, it's the idea of having fun coffee table books in your studio. So I think it's a great idea to have something that's kind of fun, kind of on topic for a studio, lying around if you have a green room, put it there. If you, you know, want to have it in your control room or wherever, wherever people hang out, I think it's a great idea. It helps people kind of decompress between recording or working on whatever they're working on. I don't know why I'm justifying coffee table books. Coffee table books are fun. So anyway, point is, I love coffee table books. One of the, my favorite ones, and it's, I really love this book, so I'm going to keep mentioning it, is Sylvia Massey's book, Recording Unhinged. So this one is not a new one, but, you know, I got to mention it. And then a book that I just got that is not on topic at all, so I don't know why I'm putting it in this list, but I'm just really excited about it, is this book. It's like independently made. It's called All Yesterdays, and it's basically these people are paleontologists. I think they're paleontologists. Science writer, paleozoologist paleontology. Yeah. So they're like, pale most of the authors here are paleontologists and artists to some extent. I think most of them are artists. And the whole idea of this book is they're taking information that we have on dinosaurs and then they're reinterpreting what the dinosaur might look like because there's some question about what dinosaurs actually looked like. You know, we have these conventions for how we draw a T-Rex or how we draw whatever animal and they might not have really looked like that. So I thought this book was really cool, and I'll put a link to it in case ever anyone's interested in it. This is one of my favorite ones, is a T-Rex sleeping. He's so cute. Just snoozing away, being a T-Rex. This is not on topic at all. Why am I sharing this? It's a fun one, though. They're so cute. Arctic dinosaurs? Like, come on. Arctic dinosaurs, so cute. So anyway, this one's fun, not really relevant, but. It's on my coffee table in my studio, which is also my home. Anyway, another one that I just got, my parents actually got me this for my birthday, is the Pink Floyd All the Songs book. So I don't know if you guys have seen this one before. I hope you can see it. Do -do -do -do. Do -do -do -do. This book is huge. So this book is really cool. It goes by year. So it starts at, I try not to hit my mic here. It starts before the band was formed, but then it goes through year by year and it describes what was happening with the band, what was going on for them in their business world and their social world, what was going on with the recording process, how they recorded different songs, like all kinds of information. So much information in here. And I love this because I, um, when I was in, I don't know, middle school, middle school or high school, I got a sound system and it was a surround sound system. And so I had like a sub and a bunch of speakers and my dad actually helped me set up the speakers around. I had like a little canopy bed. So I had the speakers on the corners of the canopy and then one in the center and then I had the sub underneath. And I just remember listening to Pink Floyd on that thing and it would just surround you. And I think that had a big impact on me in terms of wanting to do audio because I started wondering like how they made this kind of sound. So Pink Floyd, special place in my heart. And this book is really cool. So another thing that I have gotten for my studio is this case for SD cards. And so this is handy for the H4N for if you're doing anything with GoPro, like I'm doing right now, but really handy for the H4N recording if you're doing like uh, recording on location audio if you're recording stuff for sound effects or for fun whatever you're doing I have found this to be really helpful so it just holds my SD cards some of these are kind of 
ancient and probably don't hold very much data, but um, I just got them all in here. So I do recommend that. It helps you stay organized. It helps you not lose these things because they're so tiny. They can disappear really easily. And I don't know. It's just one of those studio organization things that I found to be really helpful, really useful. All right. So the next one that I thought I would mention sounds like a really silly thing to mention here, but it's the fact that I got a kalimba and I've just been keeping it on my desk here. So I'll show it to you. Ta-da. Ooh, it's a mess. I gotta clean this thing off. It's got like my oils all over it. Anyway, I got this kalimba. So it's kind of fun for making noises. You can use it in projects you're actually working on, right? But what I've been using this for is I just have it here on my desk and sometimes I get a little burnt out feeling and I just want to take a break or something and I'll just pick this up and do like a little melody. And then that kind of, it like appeases my ADD and kind of resets my brain and it helps keep me calm and focused and then I can go right back to my work and I don't end up like getting up and walking away and getting distracted doing something for like 15 minutes and end up wasting a lot of time. So I feel like this has actually helped me stay focused. And I don't know what your thing would be to help you stay focused, but I've really enjoyed having this to help me. So I figured I would include it in my list. Here it is. It's so calming. Another thing that I got, I think it was kind of recently, I think maybe around the holidays, was another Furman power conditioner. So as we add more gear, sometimes we need more power outlets. And I really enjoy having my Furman power conditioners to make sure that my power is clean and isn't messing with my audio and also to protect my gear, right, from things like power surges and stuff like that. So I'll put that in the description and I really recommend it. It's kind of boring, but it's super useful. And then kind of similar to the kalimba is just a bunch of noise toys. So I've gotten some more things that make noise that are kind of fun. I have a video where I cover some of the ones that I have. I'll put a card to that up on the screen. But basically these things are just kind of fun to add into projects sometimes or to record and then like tweak a whole bunch for sound design or something like that. Or just use straight for sound design. One of the things I got recently was a prayer bowl and that's really cool. My bunny actually was really fascinated by it when I first started using it. I like unpacked it in the living room and started taking the the wand and running it around the bowl. I don't know if it's called a wand, but I started doing that and it was making noise and she was like just fascinated. She came crawling up like army style and then she stuck her little head in the bowl <laughs> and she was so confused by it. It was so cute, but that's been a lot of fun is collecting noise toys noise toys. It sounds kind of funny. But a lot of studios, you know, all the studios that I've worked in, they have somewhere, they have like a box of things that make noise that people can use in their projects. So a lot of times it's like shakers and stuff like that, tambourines, things like that. And I've kind of taken that to heart with my, my stuff. And every once in a while I get something fun that makes noise. So another one that I can't hold up, but I will show you in B-roll is another thing that's kind of boring, but super helpful, super useful is the coffee warmer that I have right here. I'm currently using it, so it's hot, and I don't think the cable reaches far enough to hold it up, so I'll just show you guys some other way. But basically, it's just a little thing that's round, and it heats up my coffee, and it keeps it hot. So I kind of, I drink coffee all day, and I kind of sip at it. So a lot of times, if I just have a normal mug, like this one, my coffee will get cold after however many minutes, and then it's really sad, but then I drink it anyway because I'm not that cool or together. So what I have now is I have this warmer here, and I just set my coffee here when I start working, and it stays hot. And I like that. So keeps me going. Coffee's important. So that's basically it for my list for today. Let me know what stuff you guys have gotten into with your studio setups lately. I would love to hear all about it. I'm always, you know, trying to think of ways to improve my studio. So please let me know in the comments below. Another thing that's coming that isn't here yet, I just ordered my whisper room, so I'm really excited about that. So we, we will see that soon, but I think that's it otherwise. So, you know, let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'd really appreciate all that stuff. I do have that Patreon and my patrons get access to additional content. So it's patreon.com slash Kato Noise. And other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday and thank you for watching okay this is an organizational item is uh cable cable <laughs>
um, cable organizers, and this is more of an organizational item for your studio, is cable, our cable, but the thing is a pack of cable organizers. But the thing is a pack of cable organizer. Organi but the thing is a pack of cable organizers. So, all right, another new piece of gear that I got that I'm really happy with is I got some Cali uh, eight, eight, eight. Let me look. An eight, yeah. Uh, I think about having a stool. Okay. I feel like it just sounded like I was pooping. But I was just pulling something out of the drawer here without pulling it all the way out. Loop back, what you doing? What you doing, loop back, what you doing? It's just chilling. Um, I was gonna say something about my life, but I feel like maybe this video is long enough. And maybe you guys don't need to hear it. I don't know. Maybe you don't need to hear it. I wanna go to the beach again this weekend. I'm gonna go to the beach. I'm gonna take some time. I'm gonna get up from this desk and I'm gonna go to the beach. Yeah. Okay, bye.